Hey, what's good, everyone? Welcome back to Sneaker Convos. This is a little bit different than sneakers, but uh, you know, one of the things that's that's been a passion of mine for as long as I can freaking remember is uh, is wearing hats. So uh, even as a kid, I was running around getting all sorts. Of, I mean, back then I could fit snapbacks. Nowadays, we might get into that discussion, but it, you know, wearing a size eight is just not a good idea to put a snapback on this head. So. Uh, I, I wanted to reach out to some of the people that, that I think are doing some cool shit in the, in the fitted world and like talk about kind of the, the drastic changes that have happened. And I would say the last, you know, year, two, three years. Um, and so I've got Jordan with me from product, etc. Tom, new era and Vic, who is uh, a kind of industry legend in the, in the headwear design space. So guys, welcome. How, how you guys doing? What's good? Thank you. Thanks for having us. Good. We're good. Thanks for having us, man. Thank you. So, just a, a little bit of background. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna slide this out here because because Tom probably hasn't seen this in quite a while. I almost wore the red one today. <laughs> this was this was kind of the first time you and I connected online, right? Where it was like yeah. I don't know when that was, like probably twelve or thirteen years ago now. But um, yeah. it was the first. It, it was uh, actually really interesting for me because being in the sneaker thing like fitness has always been, always been a thing, right? Like, you know, being a Giants fan, a baseball fan specifically, you know, like I've got, I got the, the, the hats on, on the rack over here, hats behind me, hats in the, in the closet. Like it's as, as much as an addiction for me as sneakers. So, um, and I think like there's, there's a lot of crossover in like the creative aspects of it, right? Like the work is, is very similar in kind of what all of you guys do. So, I guess I'll start just based on the way I see it. I'll, I'll start with you, Jordan. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do, and and you know, I guess like your relationship with hats. Um, yeah. So my name's Jordan Stark. Um, I, I I'm I'm a creative. I'm a I'm a designer and artist. Um, I run a brand called Westside Love, and also a design studio called Product Etc. And that's uh, kind of met met actually Vic. <laughs> And uh, I haven't met Chetta, but um, my old business partner knew Chetta yeah. um, just from hats. Um, and uh, I've always actually fitteds were like one of my first kind of collectibles along with like baseball cards. So just playing baseball as a kid, like it was always a special treat to get a fitted, like for whatever team I was on. Um, and I think that's when it started, you know, that's when. So I was always like, I was always a fitted dude. And then uh, when we started actually making hats around 2010, um, we were at first we were like fitteds only like we're like, that's what we wanted to make. But of course we didn't, we didn't, we started from in a garage. So we didn't have an account with new era or nothing. We were just like trying to find someone to make hats for us. And the, the, so we started there and then uh, snapbacks actually were like, everyone wanted snapbacks, which was kind of weird to us. We're like, what's up with that? And then it looked like we didn't really get it. And then when we saw the industry embrace it, probably because it's so easy to manage sizes with snapbacks, they're just like, yeah, well, yeah, sure. We'll, we'll carry snapbacks. So we just kind of went with it. And then we stopped making fitteds for a while. So around that time, that's when I, when we met Vic, we started with fitteds with uh, Mitchell Ness, and then we moved exclusively to snapbacks. And then now it's like fitteds are like stronger than ever from, from what, from what my experience. Oh yeah. You definitely see in the surge everywhere. Everybody's trying to get their hands on, on the, on the different types. The colors are definitely being more uh, prominent, but uh, yeah. It's kind of interesting. Do you, so I, I guess like, um, I, well, I'll let you guys in, introduce yourself and then I'll ask a couple of questions. Uh, Vic, go ahead and, and tell us about your background. In this. Um, I'm Vic uh, from Universal Article. Uh, been, I'm a creative like Jordan um, as well, uh, but I've been doing headwear now going close to 25 years, uh, dating back to like the old uh, snapback company, Ed's West Signatures, where we were doing the college stuff. And I was just doing tech packs back then and um but my big break came when reebok acquired the nfl license and i came on board to do fitteds for them and we ran through all different types of uh things uh styles and experiments in that era and then it 
got it connected with Adidas and the NBA, and that all came together. Uh, but during that whole time, you know, I, I managed to get my hands. I worked on the G Unit stuff. Uh, so it just ran through very different eras of stuff. Um, and then uh, around 2009, 2010, um, I was asked to work on Mitchell and Ness, which uh, the SLD group had just purchased. And with, without a question, I just I signed up. I was like, yeah, please. And uh, we just went to, we went to town. And, and, you know, eventually the whole snapback thing just happened to just be there at the right moment. And it was like lightning in the bottle. And it just went. And, uh, and then after that, you know, ran a whole, you know, I would say eight years at Mitchell and then uh, did some time with New Era too, and, you know, worked on some cool projects there. Uh, specifically, you know, uh, the West Side Gun project with the Griselda records and, and, and just Don and, you know, working with Chad and I've known Jordan for many years when I used to run Universal Article blog back in like 2005, a lot of their stuff. They, they were doing with Jess Staple, remember? You guys did a hat with him. And yeah, that was the first over. version of this. We did with, uh, yeah, we, yeah. we did with the Reed Space. That was and the then, early blogging days. Like you had yeah. Nye from Strictly Fitted and, and that whole era. Um, it was a good time, you know? I was just doing it to try to get my work out there because uh, I noticed that the stuff that I was doing for Reebok wasn't getting the same love. You know, obviously the market was dominated by a new era. I get it. You know, that's, that, that, that's what's on the field. And um, coming from Queens too, you know, fitted, you know, you could only get them in certain stores. So, um, but snapbacks were everywhere. Um, I used to buy snapbacks at the local video store for like five bucks, 10 bucks, <laughs> Cowboys, Pittsburgh Steelers, whatever. And the fitted was like a real cherished thing. Like, oh shit, this is like my size. But I remember yeah. you could only get it at a certain store on Jamaica Ave. Not till it started really opening up. And I would say, I guess it has to coincide when uh, the whole color thing, uh, Chad Blue, the, the whole Ch uh, Spike Lee thing must have blown up. That's when it started, you know, you started seeing it all over Jamaica Ave. Um, so, but up to that point, I mean, you could easily go into the Coliseum and get yourself a UNC snapback, no problem. Um, so, uh, yeah, so yeah. And now, now I'm kind of doing my own independent stuff, working with, other people and, and just having fun with this and, and staying creative. That's kind of what I've been up to. Nice. Uh, what's up, guys? My name is Tom Keo, uh, Chetta BLC on Instagram. Um, I am currently the life, uh, the senior manager for lifestyle sales and marketing for New Era Cap. Um, you know, as Nick mentioned early on, uh, you know, I started my career back in the day with concepts in Boston. Um, you know, that hat was a concepts fitted that tied back to a sneaker release that we had, which was the um, Freedom Trails. And, you know, I saw an article that Nick did in Soul Collector back then about us, and I reached out to him, sent him some of the merch and stuff to go along with it, and uh, you know, kind of been in contact ever since. Um, you know, from concepts, I spent some time with Karma Loop, um, and then with the Adidas group working for Mitchell and S, working alongside Vic here uh, as the product manager. Um, when, you know, they were acquired by a, uh, a private equity group, um, you know, didn't really want to relocate. So, you know, decided to take my chances on the open market. And then, you know, probably six or so months after that, um, you know, something opened up at New Era and I've been here now for the last four years, um, in my current role, kind of, uh, you know, taking on some additional responsibilities after COVID, but, um, you know, always been into always been into hats um, as a kid. Like, you know, you guys have already said it, it, it was, you know, kind of like a crown jewel. Like when I was a kid, they were like 20, 25 bucks, which, you know, yeah. for a hat, you know, was was a bit up there at that time. Um, you know, it was something sure. something yeah. I get like one or two of a year. Like I wasn't able to collect them at the rate that I'm collecting them now. Um, but, um, but yeah, I've always been a, you know, a fitted guy, you know, my whole life. And, um, you know, excited to be working on this project during this exciting time and, you know, seeing it, you know, come back in a major way and, you know, be a driving force in the market is is awesome for sure. One thing I wanted to touch on that Chad talked about how the, the fitted is a special piece. I remember back in the days, the, the, the label that you ever had in the hat, just the way it was folded, that enough was like, man, this hat is different. Like, it's not like these snapback right. ones, like, like a poly printed 
label. This was like this stiff, freaking black label. And I would that 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 in itself would like, oh man, this this is hot. Like I need it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, I remember American Eagle too had some dope fitteds too that like, you know, they those were on the app too. American yep. Eagle was huge too. Yep, for sure. It's for interesting sure. how there's like been so much progression too, like, you know, I think there's been like a lot of ups and downs, but like generally speaking, I think you know it, it's it's very similar and i'm i'm relating this to sneakers because it's it's you know the main audience that we have here is going to be sneaker focused but i think it was you know like like chad said about the him sending me the, the the little kit right like i was stoked for the sneakers but like being a guy that was you know really into to fitted like that was like that was even more important because like i knew that he got it right like you know it, there wasn't a lot of the the connected talk, right? And you know, like we we had this to to your point, Vic, about like kind of that blog era, right? Like I, I read your stuff, strictly fitted. Um, you know, out here in the bay, we had a, a cat, uh, hella tight. He was actually oh, making yeah. his own. He was um, doing some amazing stuff. I, I have, have a couple of his. He has like he was just like he he took it to a whole different level, you know. And and I think timing in the market that was it was probably challenging, at, you know, for him at that point, but. For me, backing up even even further, I didn't really uh, like. I didn't think about collecting sneakers, you know, because they were way too expensive. To, to Chetta's point, even fitteds were well beyond my family's budget, right? Like I, I remember getting a couple of snapbacks here and there as like a you know sixth seventh grader, and like I cherished them, you know, I cherished them and I beat on them, right? Like I duct taped the back, like I had to keep them together. But I had a I had a really interesting thing, and I, I really hadn't thought about this until just now. And as you guys are talking about this stuff, when I was in fifth and sixth grade, uh, I I had a teacher who like was my same teacher for fifth and sixth grade. He moved up coincidentally that year. I became really close with him, and you know he was I think he was kind of like the basketball coach at the school for that time, right? So it was like I was I was kind of just like he was like my mentor, right? And after I like got out of sixth grade and moved on to junior high. Uh, I ended up like, like reaching somehow reconnecting with him. Like my, I can't remember if it was my mom or, or my, my stepdad, you know, became friendly with him. We ended up like, like meeting up and, and grabbing lunch over summer or something as I was about to transition into this new school. And he, I, I remember walking into his house. He was a big college basketball guy. He collected all the mesh snapbacks from, 70s 80s all the way through like like wow. he just had him kind of like your wall right he had an entire room that was I, I don't know if you guys remember this and i wish i still had him but uh there was a there was a series this is probably this is probably like late 80s or or maybe right around 90 right like so like um, i was actually thinking about like you know the teams and and knowing the teams by that time as, as you know, 10 years old or whatever, eight, eight, nine, 10 years old. But he had like, they had the three panels, right. And like the, the team logo in the center and they were all like tri-colored, right. But completely meshed back. And as a kid, I didn't care. I just was like, Oh my God, these are like this many hats. Like this is what I want. Right. Um, but he ended up like gifting me about 30 of these hats. So I actually came into to, to the hat space as a, with that collector mentality oh. before sneakers, you know, like this has been a bigger deal for me. And, and I think being like just a massive baseball fan, you know, like yeah. I think w we sure. all kind of land on that side of things too. Yeah. Right. And, sure. and like being able yep. to, being able to wear a hat, that the guys wear on field as a, as a youngster. And even now as an adult, like, you know, that's, that's way more special to me or way more attainable to me. Than being able to wear a pair of Jordans, as much as like I love those Jordans and stuff. Now, I didn't get to that point in life until you know years, years later. So, uh, yeah. I think there's a really interesting history around uh, around you know hats, caps, fitteds, whatever we want to call them. But like in in like the last say, let's say 15 years, because I think the blogs, the blog era is really fascinating because it's also where I connected with with Jordan and Tony with Chetta. Um, I think. One thing that I, I think you touched on, Vic, there's something about just doing doing the things and being creative and putting it out there and like 
look, we're going to do this whether anybody gives a shit about it or not, yeah. that, that kicked off so much of what happened on the internet in terms of blogs, in terms of, you know, creativity, and, and, and really a lot of us finding work, finding new opportunities. The network was amazing. I mean, yeah. that's what I could really put put it to, towards. Uh, I mean, you know, I was I would work, you know, the regular nine to five type stuff and then come home and be busting, going late hours, editing photos, doing things, just writing, coming up with content, doing doing all that. And next thing you know, like people are contacting you, having, you know, these you know, exchanging ideas and, and you start knowing people and they're sending you stuff. Oh, put this on the on the site. It was a cool time, you know. Um, and, and like I said, the, the network, I would say 60 to 70 percent of that network I'm still in touch with now. <clears throat> so I thought it was well worth it. And, For sure. uh, and again, it let me put my stuff up, you know, just like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Uh, um, so that that was cool, you know, the whole experience. But the game, I mean, you know, look at it now. The Instagram is just, you know, it's just quicker. And that kind of put the brakes on the on the blog era. Yep. Because IG, yeah. you just get more creative. You could do a lot more things and be quicker at it to do it. And and that's amazing. And and, and the next platform after that that's gonna kinda expand on the on the whole movement is gonna be amazing. So um you it's just crazy what's happening now. So how uh, like you guys said, like the, the Chad, you could you could talk more into this. The people are really like going crazy over these. Like even at, at the regular lids, let's say color the color unders for let's take that for example. They they're looking for those color unders, and everything goes in cycles. You know, you see that wave because we were doing the wave like what are what two thousand five, two thousand six with the color unders, and now it's back like in it, but in a new social platform, IG. So it's a whole new kind of audience. That, that's kind of getting exposed to it um, for sure you know um that that's pretty fun so when do you think that colored the the underbrim conversation really started uh, you know becoming important man originally or this this time around i i guess both because there's probably people that don't understand that like this did exist before right yeah, but yeah. then there was like there was a there was a good solid I don't know, 10 years maybe that people didn't care at all. You know, it was like there was just yeah. everybody was just into it. They didn't know the nuances or get into the nuances. Yeah. So the color done the color done the thing, even from like an authentic point of view, has always been like a, a point of contention within like the hat community. Like, you know, a lot of people remember the authentic on field hat when it had the green under, you know, in the eighties and nineties before it moved to gray. Um, and then before it ultimately ultimately moved to black, which is, you know, the current uh, under visor color on field today. Um, so there's always been, you know, especially in the Northeast corridor and in, in, in the Northeast in particular in New York, um, where people are like diehard about the color of their under visor. So, um, you know, traditionally New York has always been gray. There is still, you know, pockets that, you know, light green. Um, but then I remember, man, when like Louboutins came on the scene and mid to, whenever it was like, you know, 2005, 2008 ish, I remember, you know, the red bottoms was like a big thing for like, you know, luxury sneakers. And then I remember, you know, dude started wearing the red, the red under Yankees hat to kind of tie back to the sneakers. And, um, you know, that was a thing for a while. And then like during the dips that I, I remember like during the pinwheels, like Cam and Joel's having uh, the pink under visors on those like baby blue with the NBA, you know, Jerry West logo in the front. The um, Jay-Z era too, bro. Jay era. Yeah. 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 Up. That, that, that was a crazy yeah. thumbs. New era, Reebok. Everybody was putting like actual dress uh, shirt fabric on the yeah. hat with a Yankee logo. Boom. Yeah. Like, it was crazy. It was bananas. Yeah, but and then like you said, you know, it, it went away for a while and then, um, you know, the guys at Hat Club, um, you know, and talking with some customers in their NoHo store, you know, f you know, saw a need, you know, or, or, or request from a customer to kind of do the pink under, and you know, they thought it was cool, and um, you know, that's I think the first time we started seeing like the the trend really, really kick up in like a major way, like in in like for the masses, because a little bit before that, we had started to get a read on fitted. Um, 
you know, from like the 2017 MLB All-Star Game when Jerry Lorenzo did the Fear of God collection down there. And, um, you know, we did a pop-up um, and, you know, there were people lining up to pay $350 for a fitted. And then, you know, off of, off of that success, we saw some of the, in the back half of 17 and into 18, some of the boutique guys, you know, sneaker politics, social status, concepts, those guys start to gravitate back towards the fitted and then start to report like, Hey man, I brought in a hundred of these and I sold them in the first weekend. Like I need more. And then, so we, you know, we saw that coming and then, um, you know, definitely had club was the one that kind of brought it to the masses and, you know, kind of put, you know, the color and advisor back on the licensed, you know, on field and, um, you know, had people kind of lining up like, like they do for sneaker drops and, you know, they, they've done a great job, you know, telling those stories, you know, using the hat as the medium, similar to like the old Nike SB days when, you know, that crew used to tell stories with materials and colors and, and, and things like that. And, um, you know, they're doing the same for headwear right now, which I think is great. It's just definitely exciting. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because I, I, I think the, uh, you know, not to get too much into to, to costs and numbers and stuff, but there is an interesting like there's a bigger there's a bigger ceiling to the spending on the cap side, right? At least in the terms of you physically have more product at a lower price point than sneakers, right? So yeah. like getting somebody in the door and getting them interested, you know, it's like like I don't remember when I started you know, really going hard with, with like giant stuff. But like, it's funny because now we're at a point where I'm seeing a bunch of patches. Like I got the old hats still on the shelf from when that actually happened. And we're getting like, we're going back 10, 15, 20, 30 years and pulling those memories out, throwing the patch on the side and throwing another variation out there. But, you know, kind of to the point of, of, uh, you know, Jerry Lorenzo, the fear of God stuff and people spending kind of big money on, on fitteds. I never got to meet meet the guy behind uh, that brand, Hella Tight, that I mentioned. But one of the things that I was super impressed with at that time, and this is probably yeah, two thousand eight, yeah, seven, yeah. eight, five, six, seven, eight, somewhere in there, is that that was the first time that it was like I ever saw a fitted that was like clearly next level in terms of material, right? It was you know, and I'm I'm very much a traditionalist. Just give me the good stuff. Don't change it up. And by good stuff, I don't even mean like, don't give me like this crazy suede stuff or satin linings and stuff. But I think like that's an interesting piece of this puzzle that disappeared. But now we came back to the price point climbing. And, and you know, I don't think I don't think I would have ever expected, uh, you know, a, a fear of God fitted at three hundred, four hundred dollars ever. Right. But also, you know, like not that I could justify it. But I also understand it at the same time, right? Like it's it's a really it's Somebody's a really interesting it. twist to it, right? <laughs> sure, for sure. It's it was definitely an aspirational item, and you know that comes along with you know when you're dealing with these luxury brands, which you know Fear of God has become um, and was at that time also. You know, so it's um, you know it's just like anything else. Like you know you go and even in the sneaker world, it's the same thing. You go and buy an Air Force for ninety bucks. Um, you know, all of a sudden cause collaborates on it and it's, you know, a couple hundred and then reselling on the aftermarket for a couple thousand. So it's, you know, the same type of thing here. And, and I think, you know, to your point in like, when you were talking about like the ability to kind of get people in the door and, and get people to buy more hats, um, you know, I do think we've benefited, you know, certainly from the conditioning that these customers have gone through, um, cause most of them do come from the sneaker world. Um, you know, and, and those prices have continued to rise, like, you know, through the roof. So when they come in, although we, you know, now we look and we're like, oh, my God, a fit is $40, $42, 45 50 um, you know, from remembering back when I was getting it for like $20 as a kid, um, these kids are coming in and they're like, oh, man, I can buy five of these for the one pair of sneakers that I was going to buy. So you yeah. get kids coming in yeah. buying, like, you know, now if Hat Club drops a pink lemonade uh, story, they're not just buying their favorite team. They're buying five or six of them. They're like, all right, well, yeah, give me yep. this one. I like that logo. Give me that too. Like, I don't even know what team it is, but you know, they're just yeah. like kids in there picking up everything. So it, it's cool. And I think, you know, making that sneak of the headwear tie in again, I think we've benefited from, you know, that, you know, that world. And then also the like the reselling, we're starting to see, 
you know, fear of God hats on StockX and, you know, things like that. So it's also now that there's a secondary market for fitted, obviously that helps drive demand and, um, you know, definitely something that benefits us in the long run. So, so Jordan, as somebody that's, that's right there on the cons- direct to consumer side with your guys' hats, how, how is, how have you seen that kind of, you know, play out in terms of like people going after, cause as a as a as one of your most annoying fans who's been begging for certain colors <laughs> for years, you know I'm seeing you you like create you know way more than you did you know a handful of years back, yeah. And I guess sp- maybe speak to that on the on the and you know on the consumer facing side. Well, um, I mean, some of that is we've pivoted a lot in the last year. Um, I've I've traditionally done a lot of client work design branding work and west side love uh and our brand stuff was always like a side project and last year finally um we've been able to commit to just doing the brand um and taking very very little client work and um and so that's where we just it's always been like pushing two boulders up a mountain you know and uh and so it's nice to just focus finally on one and primarily put our weight behind it. So that's been part of our increase. Um, but straight up um, from going from uh, producing hats with Mitchell Ness and FlexFit to pivoting to uh, opening an account with New Era uh, and making fitteds again with New Era, uh, I've, I've seen, uh, we've been exposed to a completely different uh, demographic, um, as far as collectors. And, um, it's been pretty awesome to kind of see that and dive further into it. I just, I mean, it, it was probably maybe 10 months ago that I learned what a black nasty was. <laughs> and that's, and that's like, it's, a, it's, it's funny because like, um, uh, I was, I, I popped into, um, his, uh, his IG is captain America and he runs, um, um, fitted hat society on mm-hmm. Facebook. And, um, he connected, he, they were talking about, they were actually, they pulled out some of our hats and, uh, they, they pulled out. Cause I, I, I like, uh, especially our staple hats. Like I contributed to a very West coast approach, which I call the in and out menu. Like all our state, we have staple items and we focus on staple items and, um, and just, saying this is what we make and we do it really well and we focus on it and make sure those are really dialed. And then now we're kind of starting to expand to other colors. Um, and so, you know, traditionally I've done a lot of like matching undervisors. And so they pulled out a black hat and they were like, yeah, it's, it has a black under, under and, and then dude's like, ah, black nasty. I can't do that. And I was like, what the, what the fuck's a black nasty? And so like, and so, and, and Captain America was like, ah, it's a really East Coast thing. Like the West Coast dudes don't really care about it. And so then like, I did some research into it. And, and I guess at one point, New Era made some um, black undervisors that had like a, a cheaper brim. And so people associated with a cheaper hat or a, a cheaper visor. Um, and so, um, yeah, I just thought it was funny. So, I, you know, I'm learning stuff constantly, but, um, Definitely, we get a lot of requests for different colors, different undervisors. Um, we're starting to open a lot of that stuff up, but uh, totally, we've I, I've seen it firsthand uh, a totally different uh, demographic and collector and fitted hat hat enthusiast by making new era fitteds. Do you, Do you guys think you know you you all collectively you know have connections to obviously deep roots in this in this industry and you know for me just coming from the baseball perspective like that's always the the i just default to like you know at the point that i could get fitted regularly it was new era and i obviously have you know like i'm into this heavy so i have probably you know a dozen brands that only you guys would know and anybody watching would be like what the hell is that shit you know um how, how do you see that in terms of like the the overall market, you know, because sometimes like, I think, you know, Chetta and I might've even talked about this in the footwear world way back in the day, but like sometimes we go so far 
in one direction that like it's almost like we need to like bring people not only like does it help to have the competitiveness and pushing the envelope and things yeah. and i think we're seeing that in a, in a way you know like the hat clubs and some of the other uh, you know fitted specific sites selling hats now have have taken that competition from like they're they're literally taken straight from new era and spinning it you know oh we're going to do our own way and that's it but like also thinking about like you know a mitchell and ness you know the licensing side with adidas like you said vic reebok back in the day yeah. where do you see like the i guess the challenges and the opportunities with like the current state of you know i guess how good chet has done with new era recently <laughs> uh chad you want to go there or or, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I think, um, you know, to your point where it, it's definitely a competitive landscape it, it, and, you know, again, to tie it back to sneakers, it, it reminds me of the days, you know, when the concepts and major and sneaker politics and all these guys were coming up and everybody was kind of scrambling, trying to find their lane and, you know, understand their customer and, you know, figure out how to get the coolest brands and, and things like that. So, um, you know, we, while those guys, you know, those, they're like the staples in the boutique world um, and still, you know, tremendously do drive like the headwear business that, you know, the guys that are like the true, true headwear boutiques, um, like a hat club, um, like Cap USA, um, you know, USA Cap King and the guys up on Jamaica Ave, there, there's um, Hat Heaven, you know, there, there's so many good spots yeah. and they're kind of becoming those sneaker boutiques for headwear. And they're the go-to guys, and you know, like you know, you know, if you want a certain look and feel, you're for, you're looking for this guy's next drop. Or if you want something a little more basic and, and classic and timeless, you're looking at this guy. Um, so it, it's definitely exciting. It definitely keeps things fresh. I think you know our ability to deliver customs and you know how easy of a process you know we make it for our customers is you know massive like competitive advantage for us you know i think we um you know it also allows to kind of allows you to kind of stretch a trend a little bit because you're not walking into with the exception of some of these classic side patch hats you're really not walking into two three four of these stores in a row and seeing the same thing they all have a different vision they all put a different spin um materials colorways things like that so um you know, it's, it, it definitely makes it fun. It keeps it competitive. You know, these guys are always sending Instagram pictures. Like I'll be in bed at midnight and I'll, my phone will ring and I'll look and I'll be like, man, it's, how did they get this? Or how did they approve this? Or I want to do this. And, you know, it's like, you know, snapshots of, of each other's you Instagram. notice the weirdest stuff, like the little it's, details. Like, yo, I, what is this? Did you get, let them have access to this? <laughs> like, well, how'd you even see that, yo? Like, like man. <laughs> I'll try to keep that on the low. Like, but it's like, I mean, it's like it was back in the day. It's like, you know, you look and yeah. if, you know, our competitor in Boston had, had something on their website before we did, you know, our, our boss was in our ass. Like, you know, I'm like, these guys are as in tune to fitteds and they know they know everything. And like you said, like the views from the ball guys are incredible, man. These dudes yeah. like yep. the amount of research they do, I think they see more hats than I do. And I'm and I, and I work here. These are my accounts and, and I think they see they see most of the stuff before I see it. So it's incredible. Sure. Uh, for me, I mean, you know, because I I started working with Snapbacks and then going into Reebok and the Adidas, you know, you're, I started, they threw me on different other concepts. Like I was doing performance, I was doing tennis stuff or um, then all like, again, switch gears. We're doing dirty, uh, dirty ghetto kids. Uh, we were just doing all bunch of things. So I, I got to experiment with different styles, beanies, all types of other different um, silhouettes. And then when the Mitchell Ness thing started was, you know, for me, that was just one of my favorite brands, like growing up, where I come from in Jamaica, Queens, a lot of the older dudes had the Mitchell Ness leather jackets, Letterman jackets and the jerseys. And I always looked up to that. when I got the chance to actually go to Philly and actually be there and meet like a, somebody like a Peter Capolino, the owner, it was just like blew my mind. And like when I worked back in the days at uh, Ed's West, the reps used to bring me Mitchell Ness catalogs and New Era catalogs. So 
they would i guess when they would come back from those magic shows all those like atlanta shows or whatever they they used to just bring the the, the sales to and like yo you can have that and i would just be like oh man i'll take this stuff home <laughs> wherever yeah. catalogs from like freaking 1997 <laughs> and shit. uh and i would just look at this and being at reebok you know we were trying to penetrate the fitted market uh, but you just couldn't. You ever just had it on Smash? You know the Air Force Ones, all that stuff was just like it was very tough, you know, to really penetrate. And people weren't vibing with the Reebok uh, vector on the side. You know, you constantly get people yell, take. It was tough. So me as a headwear designer at that point, I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta figure out something. The blog was one, but Mitchell was a chance to just like, yo. We're not gonna compete with that. New era's in that space, and we're gonna just get into beanies, doing the palms, the old red snapbacks, and that really For just sure. opened up another lane. That the high crown, yeah, the high crown, and so many people that we ended up connecting with, you know. Uh, so it, it was a good time, and then, but around at the end of that stage, you know, I knew that at some point I had to go to New Era. At some point, I felt in my career like, yo, let me fit. See if I could jam with them. It was cool to work with them in New York City, you know. Uh, but that was a really special four-year run in Manhattan, which was cool. You know, I went to school out there, and it was dope. You know, just growing up, there. So it was fun. Well, I, I would say, uh, based on my conversation from a, a night or two ago, uh, hang on to those catalogs because we just had a whole twenty-minute talk about guys chasing down old old magazines oh. and catalogs in the sneaker world, people are paying hundreds of dollars for these things. And I'm just like, no way. it's wild, man. Like I, I literally, I mean, you know, I've been doing this for a really long time. And like, I, I, I unfortunately am uh, one of those people that very rarely lets go of anything. Um, I'm working on that, but like, I've got boxes <laughs> of old catalogs that I'm just like, Oh, I got to get rid of this stuff, man. Like, you know, but, yeah, it, but, I mean, but I'm, I'm fascinated too, by it too. Right. Like, like to your point, Vic, like getting to see that stuff for the first time, even now, like I love seeing that because I love being able to see what you guys all do in like the work form, right? It's fascinating yeah. to me. When I mean being at Mitchell, you know, and being exposed to all that uh, sport history, you know, I'm a big sports fan, just like we all are here. And then being there and seeing all the archives, and then traveling to the Hall of Fames, and and you know, getting behind the scenes treat, and, and just seeing all that stuff, it's just amazing. Like man. And the amount of like effort and time that it goes into that, because it's not just you, you know, designers. But you got the developers and the, all this stuff. Just that the timing of it, you know, that just goes into making sometimes a hat too. You know, sometimes you see the finished product, sure. but you know, there's so much that goes into to to making that come out at that time, deliver on time at the at the right time. You know, so. Uh, but yeah, the industry is, is amazing and it's just gonna keep going. Cause uh, one funny thing, I mean, this this goes back. I remember being working, like I said, at Ed's West, uh, New Era, I mean, not New Era, Twins, Twins Enterprise. And they came back from a show and they threw a hat on my desk and it was a flexible hat, but it had a raised embroidery. And it's like, look at that. He was like, look at that. And I looked, it was a Mickey Mouse graphic raised. <laughs> First time I had seen raised embroidery, and I was like, "Holy shit!" He was like, "Yeah, everything you do now is puff." He goes like, that. "There's no more flat. Flat is dead. Let's go." And now we take that for granted when you see it raised. Yeah, you don't even think twice about that. Like, yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so yeah, man, it, the industry is just like it just keeps evolving, you know. And yeah, it's it's sure. created it's created a, an interesting like segment of like hat culture because now there's people that go out and look for those 80s and 90s fat uh flat embroidered logos yeah yeah like, you know, they, you know, you know uh, i love the what's happening too with the whole something. embroidery uh you know everybody's just just doing their thing like literally just yo i'm gonna hit up these hats and i'm gonna do my thing and it's just like all out everybody's doing graphics taking whatever and putting it out there um it, it's amazing you trying, like, to it's <laughs> Say that again? you trying to set me up <laughs> nah, I do man. Not you know, uh, do not endorse this trend 
But hey, that's 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 where the the, the, the levels at. And you got to look at you know you could kind of make some some relate uh, parallels to like the music industry. Look what happened there. You know, like it's just people were like yo, no, we're gonna download this stuff and do this, and 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 look what happened. You know, um, yeah. so it just it's an interesting time right now. What's happening, and 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 as we go into other platforms, digital platforms as well. You know. Um, but you know, like you were always gonna have the collectors, the hat collectors, and and it, it, it's cool, you know, just seeing the different evolutions of it and different companies that are gonna come into play to to participate in this, you know. So, yeah, sure. absolutely. So, what do you guys think? I'll I'll throw this to you first, Jordan. But what do you guys think is, you know, the most I, don't, I hate the the word, but it's really kind of the truth. Like the most influential thing in the space right now, because you know, one of the things like I think with sneakers, you know, it's it's uh, it, you know, it, it it has rotated from blogs to like you said to Instagram to all these different various platforms, yeah. but at the same time, the sneaker companies still go like to, to Cheddar's point, right? You, you know, to really push something, you need the concepts, you need the, the the politics, you need the undefeateds to to take that next level. So, what does that look like for the for the the hat world? You know, going forward. Good question. Um, the first thing that comes to mind that I'm seeing get a lot of attention, not necessarily from us, but just in general, uh, is theme drops, like just um, like a collection of caps around a theme um i don't know how necessarily new that is but i'm seeing just a lot of you know enthusiasm for for those um uh particularly through hat club um but um yeah that and and kind of mascots and characters i'm seeing even college baseball caps like all their crazy mascots like those People like love those, and so doing different colorways with that, with the side patches and things like that. I I see kind of a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, I'm curious to hear what Vic and Cheta have on that though. I like yeah, it. I think uh, good. Go uh, I was gonna say I think you nailed it with like the the theme collections. That's definitely a driver right now. Um, Hat Club was definitely at the forefront of that. Um, you know, we're seeing that, you know, cascade down to like other, you know, headwear specific retailers that are starting to do the same thing, coming up with some super creative ideas and putting it out. Um, then, you know, on the on the other end of the spectrum, you get, you still have like our traditional boutique guys. You got like guys like Vic over at Packer Shoes that, you know, they push the boundaries on materials and, uh, you know, guys like Bodega and Concepts and, um, you know, things like that. And I think the thing that's so cool about it is, um, you know, it's there's so much segmentation in the market and there's so much custom product that we put into the market that it, it does really create an individual lane for each retailer. Like these guys can say, hey, this is what we stand behind. This is what we think is cool. We're going to design caps inspired by this. And they know their customer well enough that they're seeing success. They're selling out. They're starting to get picked up on some of these, you know, like, like I said, a view from the vault or fitted hat society. And, you know, they're, you know, through that, they're kind of broadening their, uh, their customer base. But, um, but yeah, it's, it, it's really, it, it's a mixture of those customs and how we work with those guys. Um, and then the collaborations, like we have some really good partners, Don C, Jerry, um, you know, with fair God and, you know, those guys always like allow us to kind of create those aspirational items that are still, um, you know, somewhat elevated in price, but, you know, and, and not available, you know, in every store. So it still kind of keeps the hunt fun and, you know, allows, you know, get the kind of, you know, be aspirational and, and want to go, go out and try to track one of these special hats down. So. That's really what it is for me. Um, I mean, for me, is I mean, just also, I, w I would say it's a full gamut. Because, I mean, there's just, like, so many heads now with the Instagram. You know, you got access to so many heads that are producing their own thing right out of their, their crib. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, there's this one guy called Creative King, I believe is his thing, on Instagram. And he does these 
does these amazing five panel hats. Um, uh, so uh, somebody like that, where they're just yeah. buying material and making these cool hats. And then you got the guys like, uh, you know, all my hats are dead, you know, just doing cool, buying dead stock stuff and upcycling it. And the Bandu mm -hmm. and those guys really just modifying existing stuff. Um, you know, I, I like those, those guys too. And I love everything all the way up to like a hat club, the lids and those dudes, sneaker pop, yeah. what they do. Um, you know, I, I love it all. It's all part of the ecosystem, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you look at, you take a look at Hat Club. You know, they're getting a lot of love back a few years ago. I mean, they single-handedly were helping a lot of the those like uh, streetwear brands like Diamond and Hall of Fame and Ten Deep and those guys survived. They were supporting that. They yeah. were like one of the first platforms, like a big, you know, internet presence, like in Lids, where you could find a Ten Deep hat. You know. Um, but before that, remember Fitted Hawaii out, oh, out yeah. there? They, they oh, always yeah. had creative stuff. And, you mm -hmm. know, and then you, you have the, the collaboration of the Supreme stuff, Supreme New Eras. And that's a whole other level of, of uh, you know, specialty. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I see in this, there's definitely a lot of evolution different, in different things, different styles, you know. Uh, doesn't always have to be fitted. Uh, yep. There's definitely modifications coming and people are just doing a lot like you've seen those guys adding the horns on the caps you know uh that's something that was out in japan for years i remember when, when mm -hmm. i went out there in like 08 07 i would see like people putting stuff on their hats and now you got these guys doing the, the horns the devil horns on there Great. And, hey, it's not maybe something i would rock but i think it's cool i think it's something i would just buy and collect and, and just have um, yeah and I have a lot of pieces like that that range from from a five panel all the way to to stamp back to fit it. You know, it, it's just it's tough to just stay in one uh, silhouette for me anyway. Um, yeah, I'm seeing some uh, some pretty interesting um, just on IG through ads and different brands yeah. uh, like campers, five panels, like really interesting color blocking. So the panels are a little bit different than we're used to seeing. Um, those are looking really cool. Uh, especially I, th I think it fits in that kind of silhouette is, uh, some really interesting applications as far as graphics under the visor, um, you know, taking up different parts of the panel, the screen print, and then, you know, so it yes, yes. kind of sew it in. So, yeah, I, I definitely some, I'm seeing, uh, just a, a more polished evolution of some of these silhouettes uh, where it's starting to kind of, it's funny because my wife, she's, um, she, she's traditionally been a, um, a bag designer. And one time someone said to her, they said, Oh, like how many ways can you recreate a bag? You know? And it just kind of makes me laugh. Like all the time I just picked up this uh, Nike book uh that says uh better is temporary and it's so funny because i i just i just picked it up a couple days ago and i and i brought up to her i'm like look how many different ways do you think you could do a shoot you know like to that person who said that to you how many different ways do you think you could do a shoot and um and so it's just like what could you do with headwear and i think we're really we're we're with this enthusiasm we're seeing uh, the market support kind of like an evolution and kind of looking at headwear uh, more as a fashion accessory. And that actually ties to this, uh, the Bobby Hundreds book that I've been uh, reading called uh, This Is Not a T-Shirt. And he talks a lot about that the sneaker has been a gateway for men, uh, men to, you know, kind of get into fashion. Um, and And so I think what we're kind of seeing now is like, the hat and headwear it's always been part of men's fashion for a long time but we're starting to see it kind of open up a little bit so it's it's a good time yeah i i think it's it's one of those things too like you know as somebody who uh you know i don't really have like i think traditional uh you know excitement for sneakers I, i'm i'm kind of <laughs> like i'm kind of like over the top just i love all of the shit like from you know from being a kid right like just not being able to have it like sparked me chasing it but like also 
being somebody who played baseball, played basketball, played, you know, rode a skateboard, rode BMX, you know, you know, basically tried to snowboard because I lived in Colorado on a skateboard, you know, like all the crazy shit that you did as a kid, you kind of, me look, I just look at footwear as like, Hey, there's so many brands out here that I, that I just like, I fuck with, you know, like I, I, I love seeing the creativity. And I think we're at a point with, with hats where we're almost seeing like the, the, the rise of the things like what hat club is doing, you know, is, is, is also broadening, you know, the approaches that, like you said, the horns, the diversity, the, the underbrim stuff, you know, like we're, we're seeing this like massive wave. And I think like a lot of people are only seeing the peak of that wave right now. But I also think at least in my experience with sneakers, like the more people that get involved, the more people that get excited about it, the more opportunities for people within this space to, to do cool shit. So um, for sure. The, there was a there was a question here about uh, how come it's so hard to get an SF Seals hat. F Ebbets makes one, but it's always sold out. So I uh, guess like we should we should maybe talk a little bit about licensing in it in a sense. Um, obviously, there's, a, there's that one. A golden. He's looking for a yep. golden seals. No, 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 no. See, the the Pacific Coast, the minor league. Uh, yeah, it was like a, yep. he was looking for the golden seals. <laughs> Oakland, Oakland hockey team. I was like, what? Let me answer that one. <laughs> I got you, bro. Like, <laughs> but that's a, that's an interesting thing, right? Like, there's there's so many teams, and and Jordan kind of touched on it, right? Like, you know, I think uh, we're all old enough to to remember. I mean, I've got minor league baseball baseball hats behind me wherever on the yeah. shelf back here, and like, as a as a you know as a teenager, you know, part of my draw towards towards different teams with hats was being a baseball fan, but then I. <laughs> I could also attribute it to, to being a Jordan fan, right? Like when Jordan, you know, I was one of the guys that was actually excited he went to play baseball because it was like, oh shit, this is going to be dope. Like, yeah, he, he's an incredible athlete. I'm a fan already. Now, like he's, and I coincidentally back in the day, my uncle lived in Phoenix at the time and I wore an Arizona Fall League hat for like two years straight. You know, it was one of those snapbacks, duct tape the back to keep it going. Yeah. But I just, I just loved, you know, the game, right? Yeah. And it's almost, I get more excited about, about this stuff too, because, you know, I'll, I'll get back to this, to this question about like wh why something doesn't show up, but like we now have almost unlimited creativity with hats, whether that's fitted snapbacks, right? Like there are, there are exponentially more teams, you know, and, and to, to Jordan's point about, you know, the bag development, the, the, the Nike book, right? Like there, are, there are literally no limits to the to the to revisiting the creativity that's already happened in terms of like logo design, teams, For sure. all that. Where like I think you know even sneakers is is a little more limited in a sense of people people don't want to go too far out of their comfort zone, and you have to make something that's you know a hat can sit on top of your head and be fairly comfortable for anybody that's comfortable wearing one. Sneakers got to be good, you know whether you're 50 pounds or 300 pounds, you know, like it just, you know, it, 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 all those things matter much differently. So how do you see all of those types of that, that wide audience playing into things, but also if any of you guys want to touch on kind of the, the way, I guess it's, it's, you know, it's tough to, to even know what teams that people are actually chasing, right? Like there isn't like this forum of, you know, like there used to be that, you know, now that we're all kind of on Instagram, which is an interesting kind of twist to what we're used to, I think. Yeah, I think, um, you know, so to the main question about the SF Seals, I think, I don't know about that team specifically, but I know a lot of times um, when major league teams, you know, acquire like different minor league teams or whatever, like sometimes they might move from like MIBL to, you know, independent baseball or something and, and might not be covered by the rights. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case with that specific team, but you know, we can look into it and try to get this guy a hat, hopefully. But um, <laughs> yeah, there's, I mean, with the licensing, it's 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 always changing. Um, you know, there there are obviously um, contracts that are a specific length of time, whether it's five, ten, you know, fifteen years, whatever it is. So um, that's where the different manufacturers come into play and who gets rights for you know what. Um, 
And sometimes, you know, teams just make calls on their own based on, you know, what, what their creative direction is. You know, they'll remove logos from their identity guide for a couple seasons. They'll add things back on anniversaries and, you know, um, segment products. So, you know, maybe this, the the bulldog for the for the Cleveland Browns, you know, was only for like children's apparel or something like crazy. Like it couldn't be used on men's headwear or something, you know, things like that. Mm. Um, there's all these little rules that, you know, just from years and years and years of being in the game, you kind of like pick this stuff up along the way. But, some, um, of it, some of it, though, sneaks in and makes yeah. it to the market. Yeah, some of it makes it through. Yeah. I have a quick story about the Dallas Cowboys uh, when I was at Mitchell. And, uh, you know, again, we were just cranking and we were just rolling. And we ended up having to – we needed some NFL fitting. So I ended up doing – I was like, man, we I never see the, the Dallas star in white. You know, you see it on the, the jerseys. You see it in photos, but never on a hat. Boom, we put it to town. They didn't put it through legal, I mean, through through the approval process, because everything goes through an approval process. And uh, next thing you know, the, I guess, management at, 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 at the Cowboys was like, get that shit off. Jerry does not want that out there. And it was like, take everything down. But whoever got it got that white star. It was like, I Dude. think what he's trying to say is some counterfeit goods somehow. <laughs> <laughs> it's not only to the show. So oh, right. Dallas star, but it was like a huge, we were doing the XL logos. That's where I think it could evolve to next, this whole fitted thing. Like the logos are just going to get big. <laughs> so uh, see, we, I, so we I took something different from that story. I, Chetta, yeah. I, I heard, oh, we, we need to find uh, the, uh, the whatever the stock X <laughs> or goat for, for fitted is now because yeah. that's a chase item. <laughs> yeah, sure. We got a stand talking to for that from my boss. So. <laughs> We had, I think we tried to tell him that it was counterfeit goods, and we didn't. We didn't actually make it. <laughs> uh, so I, I only got a couple more minutes with you guys, yep. but like I think you know we haven't really touched on. I guess like we've all touched on different pieces of this, right? Whether it's the collectible nature, putting out a whole a whole collection of hats, you know, as you know, Jordan said with product, etc. You know, uh, Vic was talking about you know kind of the the. Um, you know, the puff, right? Like, and people chasing the older stuff. But then, you know, to your point about, you know, fear of God and, and Don seeing these guys pushing, like, almost like, you know, we're, we're at a point where I feel like one of the next things that just has, has to naturally progress is some form of a consolidated aftermarket. So I say that, like, you know, I was a part of StockX from a very early stage. Um, but I think that, you know, in hindsight, years later, it's like there's good things and bad things that come from the secondary market. So maybe as we kind of wrap up here in the next few minutes, like could each of you guys touch on how you how you look at that and like does it affect the way you're thinking and in, in, in the way that you're creating and working with people now in the industry? Yeah, I think from from our point of view, um, you know, we we haven't we certainly haven't come to the point where we're running into issues with bots and things like that. Um, I know some stores have hat club probably being one of them. Um, but honestly, it, I mean, it's cool to see every once in a while, like if something pops up on eBay or StockX and you know, someone shoots a screenshot over you're like, wow, man, that's, that's crazy. I have selling for a couple hundred bucks or whatever, but um, it's not, I'd say we're not quite there yet for headwear. I mean, it's, it's still something that's, you know, kids are relatively new to and, and, you know, still, you know, trying to develop that secondary market. But, um, uh, yeah, it's not something that we're paying attention to, like on our end, that's like driving the business that we're like, Oh, if we make this, it's going to sell for X. And, you know, gotcha. we just, uh, we just, you know, continually trying to push the envelope, um, put out, you know, new compelling product, uh, whether it's, you know, a material story or like, you know, embroidered logos all around the hat or, um, you know, glow in the dark thread, reflective, you know, things like that. We're just trying to make, you know, new compelling product uh, that's trend right um, that, you know, we know our partners are going to be able to sell through and, um, you know, we're going to be able to support, you know, from a, from a marketing aspect. Awesome. Uh, for my end, for my end, likewise. Like, uh, I'm not worried too, we're not worried too much about, um, 
uh, concern ourselves too much about uh, aftermarket. We've seen a couple, we're, we're small enough where we've only seen a couple things being resold uh, that are sold out um, on like other, other third party sites. Um, but uh, yeah, it's kind of, we release some colorways. Uh, others were kind of like, no, nah, we're not gonna, we're gonna chill on that one for a little bit. Um, so yeah, we, we don't concern ourselves too much with that right now. We're just trying to make, um, kind of keep pushing the envelope, keep pushing our product line and our kind of product strategy and uh, just have fun with it, you know, just make cool stuff, really. I'm in agreement with the, the fellas too. Um, you know, in all my years of design, I've, I've never been there like, oh, I want this, you know, kind of how is this going to end up in the, the next life, like, like a StockX, uh, per yeah. se, like a platform like that. Um, you know, but I've seen, I've seen, you know, I've worked on many different projects, so I've seen stuff that's been on the $20 uh, rack sale, you know, because they bought too much into it, you know, uh, and I've been there where, hey, yo, this sold out in 20 yep. minutes. So I've been on both sides of that gamut and uh, it's been cool to see, you know, or, um, you know, I, I love it. And it, that, yeah, it, that's not really in the, in the train of thought though. For design. Yeah. Well guys, uh, Cheddar had to, had to bounce real quick, but uh, yeah. you know, thank you guys for spending an hour with me and chopping it up. This has been a blast for me because oh, it definitely brought up some great no, memories. Thank you, man. So um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send this to you guys afterwards too, if you guys want to post it or share it or whatever. Um, but sure. thanks everybody that's watching, tuned in the questions. Um, you. Uh, make sure you guys give these guys a follow. Uh, Jordan's at product, etc. cetera. Uh, yeah, fix got universal article. They can hit me up. It's all good. Just hit me up. Um, cool. Like cool. I said, th th that's how we network and that's how this, yep. this community grows. And, uh, that's how I met Jordan. Um, so yep. like an IG, just somebody DMs you next thing you know, it's going back and forth and it just explodes until you actually Likewise. meet the person. Yeah, years yep. down the line. So uh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks again for inviting me, man. I appreciate it. Of yeah, course. Thank you, Nick. Of course. Appreciate yeah. it, man. Thanks, guys. All right. All right cool, we'll man. catch you next time. Peace, Rick. Peace, Later.